Hi guys, in this lesson we're going to take a look at sorting the array of photos so that we can change their order on the page. The first thing we need to do is add an event handler which is invoked whenever an option in the select element is selected. To do this we can use the event binding on the select element to add a handler for the change event. So in the HTML, find the select element and after the for each binding we want to add the event binding. So this binding is similar to the attribute binding in that its value is an object and in the object we can specify events and handlers for those events. So the event that we're interested in this time is the change event and the handler that we'll use is called sort handler. So the handler function needs to be a property of our view model and one thing that we didn't do actually in the last lesson is to add the sorts as an observable array. So let's just add that as well now. So this time we do want to pass this function a value and the value that we pass it will be the sorts array that we've added our sorts and any sorts that the developer has added So now let's add the sort handler. And this handler will automatically be passed several things by knockout when they when it gets invoked. So the first thing will be the item and the second will be the event object. When the handler is invoked, the item in scope in this case will be the view model itself. So inside this handler function, we want to call the actual handler method for the option that was selected. So in the last lesson, we added the built-in handlers under the sorter property of the objects in the array. So inside the sort handler, we just want to invoke the correct method using this. And because the sorts is an observable array, we need to invoke it to get the value, which will be the underlying array. And when one of the option elements in the select box is actually selected, the event object passed to our handler function will have the selected index of the target, which will be the select element. So we can use that to invoke the correct item from the sorts array. And the actual method that we want to invoke will be the sorter. So now we need to add the two default sort methods. So we already added the names of these methods to our top level variable declaration. So now let's add the actual methods themselves. So to start with, let's just add some simple alerts. just to check that everything is working as we expect it to. So let's run the page again. So we've still got a console log somewhere, we'll get rid of that in just a moment. But now our select element has been populated with the options for each of the different sorts. So if we select one of these, we should see the correct alert from the corresponding method. Yay! We do. So everything's working as we expect so far. That's great. So let's just remove that console log, wherever that is. Here it is. Great. So now we're calling the correct method depending on which option element is selected in the select box. So now let's add the actual logic for these sorts, starting with the title sort. Knockout provides a sort method for sorting observable arrays, so we can use this inside our title sort method. So we use knockout sort method, and this method takes a function which will be used to perform the sort. So 
So the sort function receives two arguments, which are two of the items from the array being sorted, which in this case is the photos array. By convention, these items are termed left and right. The function should return minus one if the first letter of the title property of the left item is less than the first letter of the title property of the right item, zero if they are the same, or one if the right item is less than the left item. So all we need to do is return either minus one, zero, or one. So if they are equal, we can return zero. Otherwise, if the left title is less than the right title, we can return minus one. Otherwise, we just return one. So that is all the logic that we need to sort the photos by title. So let's run the page again and select the title sort option from the select box and see what happens. So remember, this is the default order of the photos received from Flickr. Lovely. But if we select the title sort, the order should change. And it has done. So now they should be sorted in the order of their titles. So now we can add a very similar sort function for the default sort method. So remember the sort method for observable arrays is provided by knockout and that's why we don't need to invoke the observable array called photos to actually get the array out because we're not using the native array.sort, we're using knockout's sort. Um, and we can add a function again as the value passed into this method and it will be very similar to the function that we just added a moment ago for the title sort and we still want to return either minus one zero or one but this time we're comparing the original index property so remember if these properties are equal then we can return zero otherwise if the left item is less than the right then we return minus one otherwise we just return one so in order for this to work we need to add a new property to our models which is called original index and which stores the index number that the photos are originally added in so we need to do this in the handle photos method And we can just add this here. We can say model dot original index, and we can just set that to the X variable. So now when we run the page, we should be able to do a title sort and then go back to the original sort. So first we'll sort by title and then we'll go back to the default. Wonderful. So in this lesson, we saw how to use the event binding to add a handler function for an event. The event we used this time was the change event for the select box. And we saw how to use this binding to invoke a method contained within our view model. We also saw how we can use knockout sort method to sort the observable array containing the photos displayed on the page. And as you can see, as soon as the order of photos in the observable array changes, the user interface for our application is automatically updated without us needing to do anything special. A point to note here is how a developer would add a custom sort. We already saw how this custom function can easily be invoked, but I just want to mention that the developer can easily access the view model using the name of the variable they use to invoke our app. So in this example, that would be my photo app. So if they wanted to pass a new sort in, they would do that using the sorts option and it would be an array and it would the items in the array would be objects which would have a name uh, property and a sorter property which had the function which actually did the sorting and then inside this function 
um, we can access view model properties using the my photo app variable. So let's just get one of the observable uh, properties. It looks like we're missing a curly bracket there. So we should now have a special sort that can't see the view model property for some reason. Interesting. Ah. So let's try that once again. And because it's an observable property, it is actually returning the function itself. It's my fault. It's because if we want to get the value of and observable, we need to invoke it. So one more time. And now we get the title of our view model, which is accessible even outside of our application. Awesome. We need to add a bit of styling for our application at this point, and our init function is starting to bloat a little, so we can address both of these issues, as well as look at making the image titles editable from within our application in the next lesson. Thanks for watching.